Hello and welcome back to chapter 2. Today we're going to look at section 2.7 which deals with nonlinear inequalities. And before we get started, I want you um, to think about what a, a polynomial looks like when you graph it. Um, when we're asked to solve something like this equation right here where we have x squared minus 2x plus 3 is less than 0, what we're really looking for is everything that is falling below the x-axis for that function. So we want to keep in mind that polynomials are only going to change signs at the zeros of the function. And by changing signs, if I have some function, and I'm just going to kind of draw one on there, let's say it goes down like this, and goes up and comes back down, okay, at the zeros, when I go and I evaluate this function, anytime I evaluate my function, in let's say this region here, I'm going to get a positive sign. When I evaluate that function down here, I'm going to get a negative sign. And by a negative sign, I'm talking about like the y value. And if I evaluate my function up here, I'm going to get a positive y value. Down here will be negative. This will be positive and so on. Okay, so between two consecutive zeros, your polynomial is going to be either all negative, so if we look at this, this is here's going to be all positive, down here's going to be all negative. So because of this, we can do what we call dividing our number line up by critical numbers. And critical numbers are going to pretty much come from the zeros if you have them. Um, and sometimes if you have a rational function, then it will come from um, critical numbers of your numerator too. So sometimes the, numer or the zeros of your numerator and the denominator are important. And we'll do a few examples with this. So to find our test intervals, which are coming from our critical numbers, we're going to, um, one, find all of the zeros of the polynomial, and then we're going to arrange those zeros in increasing order. In other words, we want to go from smallest to the largest, and these are going to be the critical numbers. Then we're going to use the critical numbers to set up what we call test intervals. And then once we have our test intervals, we're going to pick an arbitrary value that falls within the interval and use it as a test point. So then once we have our test point and we've evaluated it within that function, then we're going to look at the sign. Is it giving us a positive sign, a negative sign, um, and so on. So for example one, we're going to solve x squared minus 5x minus 6 is less than 0. And we're going to start out by finding the critical numbers. And to do that, we're going to factor. Now, one thing I want to point out is you do have to have the whole function set to equal to or less than or greater than or whatever. One side does have to equal 0. Okay, so when we go ahead and factor this, we end up with x minus 6 and x plus 1 which then tells me that my critical numbers are going to be a positive 6 and a negative 1. So I need to rearrange these from smallest to largest, so my critical numbers then would be negative 1 and 6. And the reason I want to arrange these in that order is because when I go up and I set up a table, I'm going to put ti for my test interval, Then I'm going to look at an x value, which is just some number that I'm going to pick within that interval. Then I'm going to look at the, um, we'll say the polynomial value. And then we're going to look at the sign. So these are the key pieces. So for my test interval, I need to look at everything that is coming all the way from, or anything that's to the left of negative 1. So I'm going to look from negative infinity to negative 1. Then I have to look in between negative 1 and 6. And I also have to look from 6 to a positive infinity, or everything from 6 and beyond. And I'm just going to pick an, an x value of negative 2, 0, and 7. When I plug a negative 2 into this function right here, I end up with 8. When I plug 0 in, I end up with negative 6. And when I plug in 7, I end up with 8. And as you can see, the signs then are going to be positive, negative, and positive. Now, what I notice, though, is I get 
as we mentioned earlier, sign changes occur when your function is going from a positive to a negative. So I see that I have one point here where it crosses the x-axis and one point here where it crosses the x-axis. And that's just reiterating that those were my zeros. And then my next thing I have to do is I have to look and see where are my values of this polynomial going to be less than zero. And they're going to be less than zero wherever I end up with a negative value. So when I look at this then, based on this table I have here, this is the only region right here where I get negative numbers. So because I only get negative numbers right there, I, uh, I know that anything between negative 1 and 6 are going to give me negative values or it's going to satisfy my inequality. So if you graph this, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. We have negative 1 and 6. I'm going to, and I'm going to put parentheses, because remember, parentheses means we can include it, and I'm going to graph or shade in this region right here. This tells me that I have solutions in between those two right there. And if you want, go ahead and take a second and plug in any number between negative 1 and 6, and it should satisfy this inequality right there. For example 2, we want to solve 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 12x is greater than 16. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that we have 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 12x minus 16 is greater than 0. And this right here should have been a negative, which will make that a positive. So we'll fix that real quick. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is this is factorable because we can group it. So when I look at my first term here, I can, or my first group, I can factor out an x squared, and I'm left with 3x minus 4. Out of my second group, I'm going to factor out a 4, and that's actually a negative 4, so that tells me I have to change my sign. 4 times 3x will give me 12x, and I'm going to change my sign on the 16, and 4 times 4 is 16. So then I'm going to take the common group, which is the 3x minus 4, and I'm going to multiply that by what's left, which is x squared minus 4, which is still greater than 0, and if I break all of this out, then we end up with the factors of 3x minus 4, x plus 2, x minus 2, and this is all greater than 0. And from here, I see that my critical numbers from here are going to be 4 thirds, and then I have negative 2 and a positive 2. So if I write those in order, I'm going to go from negative 2, then I have 4 thirds, and then I have a positive 2. So now I can go ahead and create my table based on that. So I'm going to start out with my test interval. And my test interval is going to go from negative infinity up to a negative 2. Then I'm going to go from negative 2 to 4 thirds. From 4 thirds to 2. And that should be a 3, sorry. And from 2 to a positive infinity. Next, I'm going to come up with some x value in each range. And I'm going to pick negative 3, 0, 1 and a half, and 3. I'm going to look at the f of x, or the polynomial value, and I get negative 65, 16, a negative, <clears throat> excuse me, 8, or 0.875, and then 25. So then I'm going to go and look at my sign, and my sign then is going to be negative, positive, negative, positive, 
when you look at your original function, it wants to know when these are, let's go up and look at that real quick. It says when this is greater than zero, so I'm essentially looking for any positive sign, which then tells me that I'm going to look at this region here and this region here. So to write that, and again, I'm looking at the inequality that is greater than, so that tells me I do not include my points, or I do not include the endpoints. So I'm looking at the region from negative 2 to 4 thirds and the region from 2 to infinity. At this point, I want to stop and I want to have you go ahead and try a few problems. I do have one more example that I will show you in class. Um, so on that note, I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you in class tomorrow. Thanks and have a good day.